This is part B of capacitor testing. I'm going to use this antiquated motherboard as an example, uh, partly because I don't care if I tear it up, uh, but to sort of show you what you should look for in uh, testing capacitors, uh, at least in modern circuits. Now, every one of these techniques also can apply to vintage electronics, old radios, guitar amps, things like that. Uh, but there are some things about modern circuits that uh, you do need to pay attention to that are a little different from uh, the vintage circuits. Mainly it has to do with ESR and it has to do with capacitor ratings. In the old days it was common for good manufacturers to overrate their components. So if they had a 300 volt circuit they would put a 450 volt capacitor in there. As a result while they would fail eventually they usually didn't fail because they were marginally rated. That's no longer true. It's very common today, particularly in lower priced consumer electronics, for the capacitor to be barely sufficient to work. And what that means is that surges or just simply heat, other things, will degrade that capacitor much faster. And so while old capacitors might have lasted 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 or 60 years, Modern capacitors don't tend to last that long. It's partly planned obsolescence, it's partly cheap uh, design, or I sh maybe I should call it marginal design. It's still cheap design. Uh, these electrolytics are usually what the, the capacitors that fail in modern electronics. Sometimes you can tell that they have failed because the top will be puffed up. But a lot of times you can't tell that. Now this, these are through-hole capacitors. They actually, the leads actually go down through the board. So looking at this capacitor, for example, you see those leads and they will actually slide down through the board and be soldered on the other side and then the leads are cut off to fit. There also is a type of capacitor called a surface mount. Here are some surface mount capacitors. Now these surface mount capacitors actually mount right down on the board and there is not a through hole. In other words the solder is right on the edges of these surface mount capacitors. There are even some that where the uh, solder pads are under the capacitors. The only way that you can remove a surface mount that has uh, the solder pads underneath is with some kind of rework station, generally hot air. Uh, there are a few other methods with uh, uh, induction heating and other things that are usually not recommended, at least not for the average uh, hobbyist. But nonetheless, if the pad is under, it's impossible to get to it with the soldering iron. You can't do it, get to it from under the board because the board is in the way and there's no conduction path. You can't get to it from above the board because the uh, capacitor itself blocks the uh, solder pad from the soldering iron. So there are two ways to remove these. One is to get a rework station. The other is to use a technique that you might see on Mr. Carlson's lab. He has a video on this. Sometimes you can remove surface mount capacitors by simply grabbing them with a pair of pliers and twisting them. The, you, you have the danger that you may wind up ripping the pads off the board. So do this with, at your own risk, as Mr. Carlson would say, but, uh, but there is a way to do that. But if the uh, solder uh, pads are exposed on the edges of the surface mount, you can generally take these off with the soldering iron. It helps to have uh, uh, one of the soldering tweezers where you can heat both sides at the same time, but it's not necessary. You can, you can lift one side and then go over and lift the other side and get them off. But nonetheless, the, uh, because it's so hard to remove surface mount capacitors, in general, I suggest that you get a tester if you're going to do a lot of work with surface mount that will test a capacitor in circuit. 
So let's take a look at one of those. This is an example of an in-circuit ESR tester. If you want to see this in action, I suggest you watch some of the videos from Grants Pass TV. He shows the use of this on a number of examples, television sets and other things. Basically, you have a pair of tweezers that can clamp onto a surface mount. So, the from the top, you put the tweezers over the surface mount like this, clamp it together, and the this meter will sense that you have a capacitor. It will then test it and it will read out with uh, the ESR. If the ESR is in the green region, then it's good. If it's in the yellow region, it's questionable. If it's the red region, it's bad. Now, my advice is, if you can uh, if you start finding a bad capacitor in a unit, you probably should replace all of them. Uh, but because surface mount is so difficult to remove without damaging the board, at least for most hobbyists, on the surface mount I would suggest if you can afford to get a tester like this, get one of these so that you don't wind up unsoldering a bunch of good capacitors just to get the one bad one. But as to the other uh, capacitors, like the capacitors that you see over there, usually those are in the power supply. They're sometimes used for bypass and other things, but electrolytic capacitors like that, you generally, it's a good idea to, uh, when you have one bad one, you probably should replace them all. But, as I pointed out in Part A, it's really important that you test the capacitors you put in. Uh, not only that they are marked with the right value and the right voltage, but also that it's a good capacitor, that it has the right capacity, that it will sustain the, the right uh, voltage or more, and that it has the, the correct ESR. Replacing a, a capacitor with a bad capacitor is worse than not replacing it at all, because the old one might have been good. So, I... Uh, We'll also talk a little bit about some other kinds of testers, but I'm going to reserve most of the tester review to uh, a future video. Here is another ESR meter that is made by Peak and it does a very good job but it only tests ESR and capacity. It will not test for leakage. This is a meter that they also make that will test inductance, capacitance, and resistance, but it won't test for ESR or leakage. Some multimeters, like this one, have a capacity uh, position that will read value, but once again, they will not test for leakage or for ESR. I want to close by showing you uh, one of the specialty testers that is made by Syncor. It's called the LC-102. Now, just like all the other stuff I've shown you, I don't have any connection with Syncor or with any of the other uh, manufacturers. But, if you really want a tester that will pretty much test all capacitors. This is probably the one you should get. This is the LC-102. They also make an LC-103, which is a later version. Generally, these can be bought on eBay. I don't... Uh, I know that they're not still making the 102, but uh, they may still be making the 103, but I frankly haven't checked in years. The nice thing about this tester is it not only will test capacitor value, it will also, well, it'll do inductors as well, but we're just talking about capacitors here. It'll test capacitor value, but it also tests all the different capacitor types in accordance with the recommendations of the manufacturers. So, for example, it tests aluminum electrolytics differently than it does, for example, other uh, electrolytics. Uh, for example, tantalum. The uh, second thing is this will go up to a thousand volts.
So for testing leakage of a capacitor like this big old 700 volt unit, uh, about the only way you can test those is to use a tester like this, because even that solar that I showed you will only go to 600 volts. It also does some additional tests, including uh, in addition to the value, the leakage, and the ESR, it will also test uh, what is called dielectric absorption, which if you deal with uh, measurement circuits, uh, sample and hold, things of that sort, or other applications where you need a capacitor that when it discharges, it stays discharged until it's recharged. Dielectric absorption is important. But basically what it amounts to is most capacitors, if you charge them up to a certain voltage and then you discharge them to zero and open the circuit again, they will slowly reacquire a charge because of what is called dielectric absorption. So in some circuits you need to measure that and this tester will do that. So I hope that this has been useful uh, in terms of capacitor testing. As I say, I would like to, but uh, circumstances may prevent uh, making a follow-up video on a variety of capacitor testers, including going back and looking at some of the vintage units that have appeared over the years. But in the meantime, have a nice day.